We've all been in it at some point in our lives, whether that's from our family members, friends, or significant others. Well, first, why do we even fall in love? What is the benefit? Love has an evolutionary basis and was initially developed in primates, including humans, so that relatively helpless young offspring would bond with their primary caregivers, giving them a better chance of surviving to adulthood. This has helped advance the evolution of the high levels of social intelligence that characterize our species. Romantic love has also been linked to better health and survival. This is best illustrated via the social dependency hypothesis, which suggests that there is a specific link between the physiological pathways required for selective social bonds and certain aspects of longevity, while also proposing that social bonding and positive social engagements are associated with the health and vitality of a human life. In other words, those who are in love live longer and happier lives. Next, let's look at what neurotransmitters and hormones are implicated in romantic love. The primary neurotransmitters are dopamine and serotonin, and the primary hormone is cortisol. These are involved in each stage of romantic love, from first falling in love to falling into an everyday routine with a partner. However, the levels of these change throughout the romantic relationships. In the beginning, when a couple first falls for one another, chemicals associated with the reward circuit flood our brain, such as dopamine, that induce an experience similar to the euphoria associated with the use of cocaine or alcohol. This has been confirmed using imaging studies which show high amounts of activity in the ventral tegmental area and nucleus accumbens, both of which are structures associated with the reward pathway. Levels of the stress hormone cortisol increase during the initial phase of romantic love to help our body handle the new stressors. As cortisol levels rise, levels of the neurotransmitter serotonin become depleted. Low, low serotonin levels lead to obsessive compulsive love that many new couples feel. The reward pathway is still activated as relationships proceed, but the constant craving and desire felt early on begins to wane. If love lasts, the relationship calms down, as the love and passion is still present, but the perceived stress felt by the body passes, meaning cortisol and serotonin levels return to normal while dopamine remains high. Other specific hormones associated with love are oxytocin and testosterone. Oxytocin, a hormone which is released when one is in love, is implicated in defending against some of the hallmarks of aging. Oxytocin is released in the most significant amounts when we are in close physical contact with other people, although that's not the only time that it is present. It is associated with feelings of calmness and contentedness, which is why you may feel warm and safe when in a loved one's arms. Testosterone affects sex drive, while dopamine, also known as the pleasure chemical, spikes with intense physical contact. Lust, an important part of romantic love, stems predominantly from the hypothalamus, a region of the brain which also controls basic desires such as hunger and thirst. The hypothalamus is closely tied to the autonomic nervous system which controls our heart rate and how fast we breathe. Specific receptors on the hypothalamus for hormones such as testosterone, which exists in you too, ladies, fire off connections to all kinds of physical reactions. The result is a strong familiar drive for reproduction. There are also sex-based differences when it comes to hormones in romantic love. We found that women in love had higher levels of gonadotropin such as FSH and LH and lower testosterone levels when compared to single women who were not in love. Humans' precedent idea of first sight love is believed to occur because of heightened levels of phenylethylamine in the brain, which makes one experiences sway away, feel subjected to those involved in romantic love. Our results pointed out that low testosterone concentrations are associated with higher scores for eros, ludus, pragma, and mania. But what happens when, in our brain when we experience love? As mentioned previously, being in a romantic relationship causes similar emotional responses as that of addiction. You might be surprised to find that it causes similar physiological changes as well. Functional magnetic resonance imaging, which compares the brains of females categorized between an in-love group and a singles group, investigated the effects of romantic love on brain network organizational changes. Researchers found that love decreased overall brain functional segregation and enhanced emotional social processing in romantic lovers. In another study, participants in romantic relationships were randomly assigned to reflect on their partner, a friend of the opposite sex, or their morning routine. Their blood glucose levels were assessed, and results showed that individuals who reflected on their morning routine or their friend exhibited a decline in glucose over time, while individuals who reflected on their partner exhibited an increase in glucose over time. And individuals who reflected on their partner also reported positive effect following reflection, indicating that this physiological response reflects eustress. This shows that even thinking about the person you love can cause physiological changes. To recap, being in love causes physiological changes, changes associated with hormones, and even changes associated with neurotransmitters. Thank you for watching our video.